Oh, hey! How's it going? I'm, I'm doing well, thank you so much for asking. Welcome to Campbell's Coins. The gold to silver ratio. What is it and how does it affect you? We'll go over that coming up. What is the gold to silver ratio? Before you I have 84 ounces of silver and one ounce of gold. Well, not really one ounce of gold. I've sold all my gold for the most part and I don't actually have a one ounce coin. This is actually one of those uh, chocolate pieces that you can buy. <laughs> but uh, for the point of illustrating uh, this, I think you get it. So the gold to silver ratio is simply a measurement of how much silver it takes to buy one ounce of these, gold. It fluctuates on a daily basis due to gold and silver prices. So when I was writing this script um, for this episode, the gold to silver ratio was around 90 to 1. When silver goes up in price, this, re this ratio becomes closer to its natural occurrence of 9 to 1, as it has done for basically the past month and a half. I'll get into the natural occurrence of silver to gold in a little bit, but um, things are going to get a little confusing here. So I'm going to be talking about two types of gold to silver ratios. The gold to silver ratio in terms of pricing and the gold to silver ratio in terms of what is mined out of the ground. I'll try to make it as clear as possible, but um, just have that understanding. So silver in relation to gold is mined out of the Earth's crust at a 9 to 1 ratio. What does that mean? That means for every, how many do I have here? For every 9 ounces of silver mined out of the ground, 1 ounce of gold is mined. And for a time, the ratio of above ground physical silver and above ground gold has been around 9 to 1 as well. As I will get to in a little bit, silver is becoming harder and harder to find in the ground. And this 9 to 1 ratio that occurs in the ground is getting smaller and smaller. Currently it stands at 8 to 1. In Roman times, the gold to silver price ratio was around 12 to 1. At the birth of the US, the price ratio was 15 to 1. That would mean 15 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. But gold and silver prices in US history have rarely reflected this ratio, and as a result, the ratio has been all over the place for the last 100 years. It has dipped into the teens a few times, 17 to 1 in 1919, 15.6 to 1 in 1967, and 15 to 1 in 1979. But just a couple of months ago, it surpassed the 90 to 1 ratio for the third time in just the past 100 years. On average, the gold to silver price ratio in the 20th century has been 47 to 1 much higher than its natural occurrence. The all-time high for this gold to silver price ratio occurred on January 1991, where it hit a 99.47 to 1 ratio. As of the filming of this video, the gold to silver price ratio stands at 84 to 1, meaning for every 84 ounces of silver, you can buy one ounce of gold at spot pricing. This 84 to 1 ratio is still much higher than the 100 year average. I have to throw out a few disclaimers here. Don't think you can sell one ounce of gold and buy 84 American Silver Eagles. The pricing ratio is based on spot pricing for each metal. So if you sell one ounce of gold at spot, you should be able to get 84 ounces of silver, assuming it is spot pricing. 
What's interesting with the gold to silver ratio is the fluctuating change of the rarity of these metals in relation to one another. Gold has always been more expensive and more rare than silver, but this has recently changed. The amount of above ground gold and silver has flipped in the last 40 years. And that is due to silver being gobbled up by industry, either from making solar panels, batteries, TVs, computers, and yes, even yoga pants. While on the other hand, gold has been used up or lost. It is treasured. So instead of an above ground ratio of nine ounces of silver to one ounce of gold, this ratio has become closer to one to five. One ounce of above ground silver for every five ounces of above ground gold. Gold has essentially become more abundant than silver because silver is being used up so much. Here's the big kicker though. The price of silver hasn't begun to reflect its lack of abundance, especially in relation to gold. Gold is still 84 times more expensive per ounce. Rising gold and silver prices is indicative of a failing economy, which is why the banks fight so hard to suppress gold and silver prices. Don't believe me that gold and silver prices rapidly increase? Check out history. Weimar Germany, 1921. Hyperinflation hits as Germany prints money to pay back its World War I debts. Gold prices, in turn, skyrocket. An ounce of gold back then could buy you one city block. That's right, one entire city block. Critics may say, this doesn't happen anymore. Okay, well let's look at Venezuela. Their economy tanked due to socialism working. And right now, an ounce of silver will buy you six months worth of food. An ounce of gold can buy you a couple of houses. Don't think this will happen here in the United States? Don't take my word for it. Do some research on your own about how propped up the US economy is. Look how much debt has grown in just the last 20 years. If you don't think the price of these metals has been suppressed or manipulated for dozens of years, all you have to do is look that up too. Many people scoffed and said, pricing manipulation never happens. And that was up until an ex JP Morgan trader pleaded guilty to doing so in a civil lawsuit. He said that his bosses and their bosses knew exactly what was happening and in fact encouraged it. So why does the gold to silver ratio matter to you? Two simple reasons, investing and wealth preservation. If you want to buy gold, buy silver now while the gold to silver price ratio is high. You'll be able to buy more gold in the future than you can today when this ratio dips down to more acceptable levels. When I started writing the script, the gold to silver price ratio was 90 to one. Now it's 84 to one. A lower ratio should tell you silver prices are rising. So as I had mentioned, as of the, when I started writing the script in June, the ratio was 90 to one, meaning that if I had one gold Krugerrand and I turned that in, I could potentially get 90 ounces of silver. Here, let's just pretend this pile here, which is with these added, that's 87. So let's just say that's your 90 to one ratio right here. If I had one Krugerrand in June, I could turn that in and potentially get 90 ounces of silver. Fast forward to today when the ratio has dropped, um, especially in the last month, it's dipped down to 79. So if I turned this gold Krugerrand in today, I could get 
84 ounces of silver, a whole lot less. I mean, six ounces less, but even when it dipped down to 79, that we're talking 11 ounces less. All because the price of silver has shot up so much. Just imagine if you were to buy all this silver for cheap, like it is right now, and this ratio continues to fall, let's say to 20 to one. For this, let's just say we have 80 ounces here, you could get four gold pieces if that price drops to 20 to one. And I suspect that it will drop even further than that because of silver's lack of abundance above ground. And it's even getting harder to find within the Earth's crust. A lot of deposits are drying up and they're finding less and less. Silver they're finding is, they're only coming across silver because they're finding, they're out there looking for other metals like zinc or copper. That's when they're finding silver, but they're not finding huge deposits of it to strictly mine for just silver. So the gold to silver ratio is important also because when the ratio drops or rises to levels that are considered extreme, I would think that a 84 to one ratio is fairly extreme. That's when trading opportunities are created, as I just discussed. When this ratio becomes high, silver becomes more favor favorable because relative to the ratio, silver is somewhat inexpensive. Watching the gold to silver ratio is an excellent strategy to follow when trying to accumulate either gold or silver. Now I think that's going to do it for the gold to silver ratio. I hope that it's helped you understand um, the different types of gold to silver ratios out there, whether it's pricing or whether it's talking about abundance above ground or below ground. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're already hitting the like button, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. If you don't like this video, don't hit the dislike button. Just put a comment below telling me why you disliked it. Um, and if you liked it, put a comment below telling me why you liked it. I would like to hear from those who dislike it and tell me you know, what they disliked and what they'd like to see changed. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.